All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to CDA League. We got another best of three coming your way, but first we have another one v one. It's Super versus Kaka. I'm Basekip here, joined once again by Danog. Bud, how you doing? Not too bad. Ready for some? Uh, I wonder which one they voted on for this because it's typically like one of the two sides they vote for, or they vote on the hero in uh, social media land. And mm -hmm. I mean, DP versus Skyrath is an interesting matchup. Yeah. Um, I feel like my gut says maybe a little bit Skyrath favored, or maybe, I don't know, maybe a lot Skyrath favored. What's what's your take? Depends really what uh, item build he's going. Well, he's going for just the pure last hitting. He doesn't have any mana regen so far, so maybe trying to build up into something earlier on so he's able to harass through that way. But you'd have to think uh, once he's got that Spirit Siphon up on the DP, you can just, you know regen back anything that uh, isn't super long range i don't know because if you ever try and use it on skyrath himself one he's going to be pretty far away and two he can just concussive shot you and and run for it it's got pretty high base uh, move speed as well but so you got a full 10 oh we were talking about this the strats he's done it kako with the sentry and it pays that pays off big time that's going to give him some experience yeah all right, I mean, these are support players, right? They know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. The the one v one meta is is evolving. Thirty seconds to battle. I'm liking that the fancy dot that Kaka uses as well. You know, it's not just the, oh, yeah, the, the full like, stop, the, the period. Mono, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the like full width dot or whatever. All right. Well, I've got. I'm I'm betting Kaka on this one for for sure. Even before that happened, but I get the yeah. feeling. Yeah. I get the feeling at some point the Skyrath can just buy a million mangoes and just completely force you out of the lane. Um, yeah, I, I'm surprised that he didn't do it earlier on. Maybe just waiting for that uh, extra little bit of kill potential when he's got uh, his arcane bolt or his concussive leveled up a little more. I mean, what level do you think either player is going to be going for a kill? I think Kaka could go for a kill at 4 or 5. I, I'm not convinced that the Death Prophet really has any kill potential. Unless uh, the Skyrath kind of messes up and just tanks a lot of hits. Maybe the Death Prophet can go for a kill at like 5. Maybe 6, you just get Exorcism and you try and dive under the tower. But I think you would need a Boots advantage or something. So you'd yeah. really have to CS super well before that point to, to have the possibility. Kaka taken a fair bit of harass so far, so uh, Super will be pretty happy with that. Yeah, He's I got get, the one mango. I guess the DP does have a pretty significant base damage advantage. 65 versus 50, though as I say that, Kaka gets the, gets the snipe. They're tanking a lot under this tower though. And really not getting a lot of these CS. Man, I'm completely unwilling to use the uh, the bolt for CS, it seems. I guess just realizing that he doesn't have the the biggest amount of mana regen, and so needing to save it for an absolute necessary situation. Alright, hit him with the concussive. He's got a couple of mangoes now. Super just munching on extended tangos, gets his full wand out, makes a lot of sense. We're playing against the Skyrat. And now 7 CS, getting in with the drain a little bit. A couple more auto attacks. We'll be missing CS under tower for this. So I'm not sure if it's fully worth it for Super. I um, mean, he's going to get the one deny at least, and I think he got most of the experience, but... Not Maybe if he was able to cancel out the healing salve, it might have been worthwhile just to completely gut uh, neuter Kaka's prospects, but... yeah. But, well, to me, it seems like when they're just straight up CSing, Super is definitely doing better. But there's just been a lot of, a lot of chasing, a lot of aggression. Uh, so very low CS game, on the whole. Uh, lots of spam though. It's really starting to add up on Super. Does have a salve, and these stick charges, but lacking the opportunity to really use it. And Kaka's still chasing. 
Here comes the nuke, but there's the stick charge turnaround. Kaka's tanking the tower this entire time as the salve also comes through, and that's going to be your first blood. And the GG is called. All right. Yeah. Got baited by the one charges and uh, took just a few too many tower shots in going for that dive. It's the downside of having that low armor as well as having a Skyrath. It's just the obvious magic stick counter. So going to be taking it as the DP this time around and we've seen that uh, the winner of the 1v1 matchup most of the time has a pretty significant advantage moving into the actual series itself. Always relevant. So IG going for this Mirana and now also picking up a Lycan. RNG's lineup not necessarily super well equipped to deal with Lycan just yet and not a lot of AoE control. Um, yeah. Very single target focus right now, you're completely yeah. right. Couple so of interesting picks though. Good. And where they're going to lane the Sabaton as well is a big factor. Yeah, we saw Tidehunter go up against the heavy melee lineup yesterday, but no, it just didn't feel like it did all too much, especially after those BKBs came out and you were able to deal with the uh, the ravage with relative ease. Yeah, and I mean IG do have plenty of magical burst as well. Like, I don't think they're going to have too much Ten trouble seconds, really putting really? a lot of pressure on this tide um, and if he gets caught inside Five of the arena really? of blood and the uh, Mortimer's kisses are raining in uh, should be fairly easy to bring bring down the tide but I can I can see the idea right they're like oh no here comes Lycan we need something to deal with it let's get a big AoE stun uh, let's get the anchor smash to help clear up all of the the summons so nice idea um, what do you make of the Marana? Is the Marana going to be a position 4 and then it's like a 5 snap or um, is core Marana a thing? I don't think it is. Uh, I think okay. just the little bit of extra scalability on the arrow is really useful. So for people that aren't in the loop, uh, it just got a little bit of an extra buff to damage at each level and it actually scales a little better now. You know, it was always a really strong... Uh, ability early on into the game just because of the, the maximum stun that you can get from it if you're on point as well as the bonus damage just being flat across all levels but now I think it's like an extra 20 damage at level 1 an extra 30 at level 2 40 at 3 and 50 at 4 if that makes sense okay yeah yeah, so yeah it's pretty handy I, I, I can see it being run as the support here you do need to be a little more mindful of it though, you know, considering you're going up against a Tide Hunter just with the Kraken shell, it can shrug off any sorts of stuns. You've also got the Aphotic Shield that could come out from Storm this uh, Abaddon. I don't mind the Storm Spirit. It's uh, going to be able to get in onto these back lines. You know, if Marana gets chained from the very beginning to the end, you know, probably Storm Spirit zip in and then Ricky jumps in afterwards. It's uh, going to be a dead Marana relatively quickly, but uh, yeah, I, I trust that Kaka is going to probably be able to position the Mirana well enough that that's not going to happen all too many times. Mm. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, I guess the there isn't a lot of instant lockdown Five seconds on remaining. IG, so maybe the Storm Sturt's going to be able to get away with things. But I can also see a situation if if he gets caught by one stun, he's done at that point. Yeah. Right. Like if he gets hit by any of the random stuns, they've got some really long duration follow up. Uh, with whatever they happen to catch and now IG going for a Slark as the final pickup. So three melee cores uh, Remains to be seen how exactly they're gonna be setting up these lanes as now we get the picks coming in But this is a really uh, really interesting draft from both teams. I would say Yeah, and now as well, you've got the uh, The better cosmetics on the tide hunter. Yep. Compared to approved, yesterday, approved. Which... I was just about to bring that up <laughs> Very nicely done. I mean, does Mars even have any at the moment? He's got the spear. Um, yeah, the, the red spear, right? Yeah, I think that's the only one he's got. I've seen there have been a few cool sets that have been posted to the workshop, and then people have then uh, posted on Reddit. So I, I think there's some stuff in the pipeline, but uh, we don't have that many just yet. I want a Corona treasure set specific. Like fundraising? Yeah. Nice. I'm well, so curious as to what's going to happen with TI. Like, so am I. I've already got flights booked. <laughs> so. Oh, dang. Yeah. Okay. I, I was quote unquote prepared for it. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, anything can happen in the world these days. Yeah. 
Well, it seems it seems very unlikely that it's gonna go ahead with a live audience, right? Yeah. But, uh, if it if it goes ahead at all. Uh, I guess all, all we can do is speculate and wait, right? That's uh, neither one of us has any any information to share. No. I what? was a little bit excited when the uh, you know the expressions of interest for TI eleven came out, and I was like, Australia, let's go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It would have been pretty hype, oh, but uh, you know, this definitely throws a curveball in the works uh, because if this year's is going to be impacted, maybe. You know, who knows? Sweden's going to get it next year as well. Yeah, or are they going to they going to shift the whole schedule? What's uh, be very interesting to see. We got a couple of curious, well, not curious, but I think interesting starting item choices to point out. Uh, Monet is sticking with his Ring of Regen that he always buys. Uh, Flywin on the Tide Hunter has an Orb of Venom, so I, I think if they if they saw a hero even slightly out of position here, they were just going to probably skill gush and uh, and go for it. Uh, anything over on the uh, over on the radiant side? Sorry, IG Snapfire still going for the headdress. Uh, Kaka's just got a windlace to start. He is being scouted by this dire obs. Um, and that's about it. Lycan heading mid. Talk safe lane. Yeah, uh, windlace not completely the usual thing that you pick up on a Marana. You know, some go for the blightstone just so that they can harass a little bit easier in the lane. Some go straight for the boots. It's not one of those things that it's naturally going to build into something else that uh, your team might want to have, or you yourself even. Tranquil boots not exactly the best item for Marana. Yeah. What's happening here for RNG? They're, I think they're just trying to see if anyone is... Like, if Slark hadn't walked to the lane just yet, they were going to maybe be a bit of a bully. But okay, so Abaddon's now gone top, so it is a double melee lane. Uh, up here against the Mars Marana, and Snapfire has come down bottom just to help out Emo on this Slark mid lane matchup. Lycan versus Storm Spirit. Can't imagine that this is a particularly amazing matchup for the Lycan. Um, but it does have a lot of sustain, so it should be okay. Jace is getting blocked pretty heavily here, takes quite a lot of damage, even skills up the God's Rebuke. Just to push him away a little bit. Yeah, this lane uh, with Kaka coming up against it, it really reduces the kill potential, right? As soon as you've got that aphotic shield, it just means that Kaka both uh, is prevented from using the arrow to its maximum potential other than last hitting creeps. As well, you're always in a little bit of an issue with uh, this shield just popping off and dealing a lot of damage to him. Uh, I guess the only thing is that Super will have to be careful that there, there are two stuns that he kind of needs to deal with, so... IG could still kind of time it right, and this is the way we've been seeing Ricky playing a lot in these lanes. Kaka salving up, trying to survive, but Monet will still get in there for the first blood. The Aphotic Shield under the tower really enabling the dive for Monet. Yeah, yeah nice. and uh, really importantly as well, cancelling out the salve from Kaka too, so it's going to be a lot of net worth lost very early on into the piece. Yeah, that's some bonus value. Oh, Kaka came over here trying to farm up this camp a little bit. Uh, unfortunately, hit one of the small creeps, but we'll still be able to stack it. So, it does have some reliable farm to be able to grab a little bit later on. Mid lane, relatively even. Sight deny lead in favor of Setsu. Uh, Flyfly's getting dragged back right now. Just trying to micromanage these wolves, but it does end up feeding one away to Setsu there. Uh, what else is happening? Bottom lane's pushed in pretty heavily, so Flywind's got some some room to maneuver. Um, I do think that Emo needs to buy a stick. I think it's just so important that you buy stick against Tidehunter. Or get something out of all the Anchor Smash spam, but we'll see. Might it's not it's free it. real estate, you know? Yeah. Why wouldn't you want to do it? Oh, I think he's I think he's already got it coming right now, as I say that. Yeah, Curry's making its way around. Kaka's getting chased by Super. Uh, but nothing too crazy happening in these lanes so far. Uh, all these kind of getting gone on by September. And thinking about this courier, oh, decides that he wants it. Dive through, one hit, second hit, Emo's courier down. Kaka's still getting chased here by Super. Yeah, <laughs> it stops to get a little bit of farm in between. Hmm. And that's the thing, you know, Windlace Piranha is still slower than just naked Baden. 
it's kind of ridiculous and forces out a lot of these uh, leap charges just to try and get away. And if you're Monet, you're pretty happy to take this 1v1 matchup against Amaz. Yeah, better than just being harassed constantly by the Murana, for sure. I'm making a little bit of an attempt here. The arrow does connect onto Super. I guess that's the one downside. If they uh, if they go on the Abaddon, then the Ricky can't really save. Uh, so, he does have to be somewhat careful with his positioning. Uh, where do you think, like, where do rotations start to happen this game? I'm looking at the mid lane, and I'm not really picturing either one of these two heroes being that active. Storm might take an opportunistic gank here or there, but uh, I don't think there's going to be any fast rotations. Yeah, I mean, the only rotations that have happened so far are just for these runes. You can see Setsu is just coming in. He's going to have to take the haste rune, otherwise the wolves are going to deny him off. So nice little play there by Flyfly. And Setsu even used his TP to try and uh, get there in time. Okay. He's gone on a little bit, forcing out a lot of this uh, mana regen coming from the Abaddon. So doesn't have all too much left, just the Mango remaining. Yeah, it does almost, well, has enough for his boots. If he so chooses. Monet, just double Wraith Band so far. Get the extra stats up. Um, we do have the Spear, a bit of damage. Getting pinned in here, a couple more auto attacks. Abaddon not really there to help. JT still chasing. I don't believe he's going to be able to finish this kill. Arrow is off cooldown for Kaka if he wants to try some kind of snipe, but it is only level 1. And Super is now in position. Shield coming out. A spear under the tree, but Kaka a little bit slow on the mark there. Wanted to just go for the bounty runes instead. Uh, and I think if they'd landed that arrow, could have had a pretty decent chance of actually getting that kill. But... Could have even had the chance for a double kill, you know. Mars had just finished up the Soul Ring, so he does have that burst potential. Get off both of his key abilities. But, you know, not the end of the world either that they just go and grab the the bounties. Uh, do you feel like there are... Uh, do you think you favor one team, clearly, going late here? Oh, another spear. Arrow connect. Super trying to get out of, get out of range. He does have a shield, but he's not going to get the chance to use it. Nicely done by IG, setting that one up. That will get them on the board. I mean, going later on, you're always going to have some more scaling, I would feel, on RNG side. Just because you've got a Tide Hunter that if it gets to, let's say, level 25, he's going to have all of that uh, increased damage. If you're playing it in this uh, style, he's in, speaking of him, he's getting ganked a little bit down here. Yeah, making it go on him. There is a rotation over towards the mid lane as well. Uh, but... Storm's TP'd in, so looks like no, nothing really going to happen to September. Kaka comes in, gets a quick D ward. They do have a little bit of ward stacking going on here uh, over on the dire side of the map. Just really wanting to keep tabs on the Storm Spirit, I suppose, and his rotations. It does happen a lot that you know Storm, once he's farming his way through the jungle, as uh, Flywind's getting nice. gone on at bottom, Lycan also a popping up. Space. Yeah, they're looking for both kills here. September getting chased down, does have the dive. Looks like Flywind should be 100% dead. September gets to the cliff, will dive over, but Flyfly's still going for this. He's got a couple seconds left on the ultimate, and no fire spirits. Flyfly, a couple more crits, should be able to do this. Fairy Fire comes out, but he's grabbed that kill. Monet trying to get him on the way, but Ooh. Lycan just survives. He actually tp top. Uh, so I, I guess kind of an efficient play for him. We'll be able to stick around a little bit longer, and uh, JT's got some tangos for him. I'm uh, actually missing a kill at bottom. No, actually at mid. Kaka getting brought down by Setsu. But yeah, you know, as it gets later on, yeah, this uh, Lycan is going to be a big threat early on into the game, but goes super late, then uh, that, of course, like I mentioned, Tide Hunter becomes a factor. Storm Spirit level 25 enables you to push out lanes a lot easier. Uh, yeah, once the BKB starts Ooh, to reduce Ollie down on Lycan. Getting gone on. A couple of TPs coming in here. Super also just trying to slink out. Kaka kind of looking at him, but... Yeah, I think this game, if they get to level 25 on Storm Spirit, gets really hard for IG. I mean, uh, maybe they can have a big scaled Slark in the later stages. Tidehunter getting gone on. Has been speared, but uh, Fly Fly, this is a lot of damage that he's taking. And he's still tanking the tower. Hasn't been able to drop the aggro. JT will continue the chase onto Flywind. Doesn't want to use the ultimate. Probably just going to wait for the spear here. Uh, or just the rebuke. There you go. Finish it off. And that will be another death for this Tidehunter. Not having the greatest of starts to this game. 
And Flyfly already applying pressure with this Necro 1 up at top. Necro 1, he's got that great passive uh, regen as well, not needing to finish up the books. He's only 10 seconds away from being able to use his next ultimate if he wants to, and those wolves just keep coming out on cooldown. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure. Setsu trying to respond to this by pushing out the mid lane, but Snapfire is able to just sit there and uh, hang on to it. And Emo chilling bottom, no pressure there really, so just ends up being some free real estate for IG. Uh, they still have these, well at least one of these wards over in the dire jungle, but Setsu has been spending a lot of time just hanging out mid. Now going for the dive into the tower with the invis and more than enough damage to finish off the Snapfire and pave the way to put a touch more pressure on the tower. The Kaka is going to turn up and just take over. I'm liking this though, you need to go for the uh, the risky types of plays. And, uh, well, Arrow just missing the mark to try and secure the last hit there, but it was uh, it's some good plays coming in here from RNG. You know, we saw yesterday that they were diving way too deep, you know, up, up to tier 3s when tier 1s and 2s were still available. You know, it's just that measured sort of response that they need to be taking. I wasn't expecting the Lycan to be able to be so aggressive like this. Like the, He used the ultimate to go and get the kill bottom, immediately switches to top, uses the Necro Book to get a kill, and the tier 1 tower. Flyfly is really making a lot happen on the map. Of course the Storm Spirit is getting a ton of farm. Uh, Setsu's really been doing well for himself, but this is not what I was expecting to see from the Lycan, at least this early on. 10 minute bounty runes coming up, Emo will be able to snag this one, looking like it might be 3 uh, for IG as Flyfly Fly popping everything. He's got his sight set on this Tidehunter at top. Flywin is level 6, he's got the Ravage available and will skill it up now, maybe looking for his opportunity. Setsu will be jumping in, JT potentially the target, but Storm Spirit instead just goes for the stack of summons. Uh, cleans up the melee Necro Book and that is going to be all she wrote on the top lane. I mean, they didn't have any sentries. All of the uh, dire heroes that started to rotate in, there was no detection once that Moonlight Shadow was popped, and yeah, with the ultimate Lycan, all you need to do is really is run away after the Tidehunter ulti. Yeah, that was... that was really not what they were hoping for. Uh, I imagine we'll see a couple of dusts being bought up in the next little bit. And Emo just takes this opportunity with some space on top to play aggressively at bottom, knows that he can't really be punished by the Storm Spirit TPing at the very least, and he's just going for an Echo Saber first. Um, I would say not a completely forgotten build for the Slark, but uh, the, the Fusel did kind of take over in popularity for a little while. Uh, do you like the choice, this game? Uh, I think so. I think against a Tidehunter, it's just really important to start to get those stacks up ASAP. Uh, I mean, both are honestly pretty good items to have. This uh, engagement, Kaka. Kaka, he's getting gone on again. Yeah, he's dead. Played with fire, couldn't get the leaps out fast enough. I thought after yeah. he took the shield damage, he was just gonna back, but never mind. And uh, as well, I'm, I'm just more keen to see what Flyfly does in about 30 seconds time, because they'll have a 35 second window where they've got the full shapeshift duration, and there won't be an ult, uh, Tidehunter ultimate to be able to try and counter it, so... Maybe that's the time where they're going to start putting some pressure onto this um, mid lane tower, who knows? Yeah, definitely could be something to look for. Kaka... Arrow sails a bit wide at mid. Monet once again just pressuring him. Uh, gonna try and force him out of the lane, dive in from Setsu, looking under the tower. Do need to be careful of any rotations coming. Mm. It's just the two of them. Well, they found around. out Fly Fly, it's just on Monet though. This is not looking like an easy kill. They could go for a big zip, maybe. Ooh, they're thinking about it. I believe the Storm Spirit's now being scouted by this board, but Flyfly's still just sticking around. Jump comes in, the Mars looking for the turnaround. Do they have enough to keep the Lycan alive? Flyfly stick charges, he gets outside the Snapfire Cookie as well. Is gonna get him out of there. Super taking big damage, doesn't have the ultimate. He's just gonna get worked down. Emo now also coming in. Kaka with the body blocks under the Storm Spirit. That's all the mana that Setsu has. He's trying to bottle up, but the arrow finds him, and IG will be looking for yet another kill. JT sizing up the spear, not quite there. Uh, but Setsu still will be brought down. Flyfly gets his revenge. And RNG, a bit of an overextension. And walking right past that ward. I mean, they. Oh, they even have a, a sentry on this high ground, but uh, 
I guess the obs got planted later. Why would now come in? Yeah, they've got the ravage, but Storm Spirit's still ten seconds away from respawning. That was a cool little play from uh, from the Lycan there, just realizing that look, I'm not going to be able to really impact this team fight, but I still want my creeps to. He just finished up his Necro Book level two, so we still pop the ultimate, even though he wasn't hitting anything right until the very end. It just enabled his creeps to continue chasing down that Storm Spirit and getting enough damage to allow him to get away. Not, not get away, rather. They're trying to make a rotation on this slug, but he's tanky. Strength Tread, 1700 HP, has the ultimate available. Emo getting gone on. Arrow flying through. That's on the Ricky. Emo just going to pop the ulti nice and early. Ravage gets popped. Just clips him on the edge, but there's the cookie. Oli trying to get Emo out of here. Not enough life. And now Snapfire on the run, Mars. Nothing that he can really contribute, and it will end up being a double kill for Setsu. Yeah, I'm liking it. Taking these aggressive engagements means that they can instantly transition into trying to take this tier 1 tower. You've got the Lycan on the top side of the map trying to put some pressure on the top side, but I think it's going to give them plenty of time to rotate and stop this and get some free farm actually on their side of the map. I really like that RNG have the confidence after that failed gank on the Lycan to be like, okay, we're still strong. We still want our. We want to use our storm spirit to the fullest uh, of his potential, and they just go for another immediate gank. Like, of course, IG are missing a couple of cooldowns uh, at the time as well, so it makes it a more natural play. But I do think there are teams that would have that first gank would have failed, and this, you know, they would have just been like, okay, let's just farm another round of items before we think about doing anything. Uh, though IG with the ravage used, they head into the pit. Yeah, I think it's part confidence and part necessity, you know, realizing that you're up against a like and you need to make these early rotations happen, you need to slow down the cores as much as possible, and if you can take a tower, then great, you know, they're just banking on their ability to outplay IG, and the fact that they didn't have a couple of cooldowns meant that it was just a little bit easier, but yeah, as you said, it's a balancing act, and because of all of those uh, spells being used, it means that IG free to take that Aegis, and now they can be on the front foot. Yeah, it's going to be much easier for Emo to play in these fights with the Aegis. Ravage still on cooldown for 50 seconds. Uh, September is just rushing a Shiva's. Storm Spirit working on a Bloodstone. Does the Ricky have Diffuse? Yes, he does. Uh, and Monet going for this build that we have been seeing a little bit. Now going back for the, the Battle Fury. Can you explain this a little bit to me? I feel like I don't, I don't quite get it. Not really, <laughs> okay. I'm being honest. Okay. I, just about the Battle Fury, I do like the build-up for it, though. It's mm -hmm. uh, a lot better, it's a lot more gradual. You don't need to commit all of your resources into something like a Demon Edge, because you have the risk of dying and losing your unreliable gold. Now you've actually only got the uh, the Mithril Hammer as well as the Broadsword, so you know you can have that extra amount of damage that enables you in team fights, allows you to farm a little bit quicker earlier on. Um, I think it's a good change overall, and it's a bit more of a fighting item as opposed to farming too. Is it just like that the for the Ricky it kind of lets him stay relevant and get into his later items? Is there maybe people feel like a SNY or a Manta just isn't really worth it, and they would prefer to get the B Fury and then aim high and get like Nullifier, Butterfly, that kind of thing? Flywind's getting gone on here, we'll get stunned up, Emo still stealing some stats, doesn't have to be worried about the Tidehunter at all, he's only barely got the mana for the Ravage, and they're just letting Emo do this all by himself, he wants the reset now, does not want to lose the Aegis like this, they try and dive through to block the pounce, but Emo's still gonna get out of here, and IG with the Moonlight Shadow will just take him back to safety. No Shadow Dance active anymore, so it needs to be a little bit careful, but when you've got this Lycan Necro Book level 3, there's not too much you can do on RNG's side to try and stem the bleeding. They will end up losing the tower. They're just waiting for their Storm Spirit to go and get some mana. Maybe they'll think about taking a fight now. This is a really crucial moment, though. Uh, and they do still have a you know, fairly big AoE teamfight combination that we haven't really seen just yet uh, with the Supernova and the Ravage, though it's always... It's going to be a bit difficult to make good use of the Supernova this game, at least before Storm Spirit gets like an Ags later on. Maybe at that point, Ravage plus uh, uh, Vortex will guarantee the Supernova on somebody, but... And now at least you've got the level 1 smokescreen, so there is yeah. some 
follow-up potential. Oh, Slark trying to make it go. Lycan popping the ultimate on the back lines. They found the Storm Spirit. They yules him up. It's too much damage. Setsu gets popped instantly. RNG trying to fight, but Emo still manages to get the Shadow Dance off. And now Monet's in danger. He's looking for a Blink Strike, but nobody's giving one to him. Pounce from Emo chases him down. That's the two big cores dead. And now IG are just looking for the cleanup. Flywind does not want to use the Ravage. He gets caught by a long arrow. Fly Fly being controlled nicely by September as the two supports do make it back inside of the base. But now the arena will prevent Flywind from escaping. The Supernova not really doing anything. They just rush the high ground. September does at least manage to get the stun off and dive away. But that is all three cores dead and a Ravage used for nothing. Not even the Aegis pot. Not even the edges popped, as you said, they've still got another minute and a half left on it. I mean, this lane's pushed in, all five heroes are mid, why not just keep going? So, no, they're wanting to back off, just happy to wait for the next like an ultimate. It's reasonable. I mean, it'll give them about a 30 second or so window where you still got the Aegis. Super's getting gone on, he doesn't even have the ultimate right now, he's just dead. Free stack for Emo. <laughs> not the okay. best positioning from, uh... I'm super there. Just, I guess just assumed. Alright, I'll get my ultimate up before there's any danger. Uh, IG just proving time and time again that they have so much burst damage. I am liking the way they're going about this as well in terms of the order of towers that they're taking. You know, the bot side, they're just ignoring it completely because they don't want to give that glyph reset off to RNG. That'll allow them to, you know... Setsu playing with fire was just eating the necrobook shots that entire time. At least he can pop the Bloodstone heal and he'll be okay. Over at mid lane though, Monet can't say the same thing for him. Flywin just getting auto attack down, pounce in one second. Emo's going to be looking for a little bit more, just settles for super instead, who will be forced to pop the ultimate. JT coming in, now looking to control the Tidehunter. He breaks out of the stun, but he can't get out of the arena. The big zip through from Setsu will look for the turnaround here, but it's just the Aegis claim. Super almost dead. Can they quite finish him? He's got the shield, but Kaka still finds the double kill. Setsu has enough mana to jump in, but not enough to get back out. So he's just waiting. Kaka jumps forward now. We'll be looking for the arrow. September trying to tank it for his teammate. He's going to be brought down. Looking for the turnaround is the storm. We'll be able to get one, but now he's being pounced up. Emo's low, however. Setsu's still fighting. Ollie's going to hold him back with the little shredder. And IG will have to take a bit of a breather. Back off. Where's the body? Very measured plays by RNG, though. Not wanting to expend any sorts of buybacks, relying on the uh, the individual skill from Setsu to be able to get away from that, and you know, it was very much a get down Mr. President sort of deal with the uh, the Phoenix jumping in the way of the arrow to prevent. All that was really, demons. that was actually really, really nice. I mean, that got them, well, I guess it only got them, what, one additional kill? It got them very, very close to killing Emo's them. low on this bot side. Yeah, Setsu's looking for him. Emo doesn't have any way out. And that is a very nice kill. Almost 700 gold for Setsu. Kill streak ended, and uh, definitely some nice levels for him as well. Full 1k experience. Yeah, nice levels as well as getting Monet closer to that level 15. Big power spike, no matter which way of the oh, talent tree they're going in aggressively. Go. They want Flyfly, Fly, but the spear comes back. Ricky won't be able to do the damage, and now with the Snapfire Cookie. Flyfly Fly able to get a little bit further away. They've got the Phoenix Sun, but JT just going to throw down the arena and make the retreat. Monet thinking about going in a little bit deeper, but RNG are just going to have to call it quits. They do have the Ravage back up, so not the worst idea for them to still be applying a little bit of pressure, but I think they want the mid tier 1 tower more than they want this bot tier 2. This is gonna. This next couple of minutes is gonna be so pivotal. This yeah. game. I mean, RNG are doing well to hold on with their fingertips, basically, to this game. It just feels like there's a couple of great individual plays from uh, from their end that's punishing IG for perhaps being a little too cocky, a little too confident. Emo has been caught out a few times, and he's uh, getting closer to that silver edge of his, which will things a little easier. But, uh, yeah. Still in a risky position if you're an IG fan. Yeah, this is uh there's so much weight on Setsu's shoulders, right? Like if the Storm Spirit gets gets caught first and just dies, then they lose the team fight for sure. But if they can keep him alive and keep him putting out consistent damage and just continue playing for that level 25, that's really going to be uh, where they could potentially start taking over the game. And as we get later, the Tidehunter always going to become more and more relevant. 
uh, just as respawn timers get longer and longer. Though, like you were just saying, that Silver Edge is going to be tricky, because if he gets caught by the break, and then they hit him with the stun, they could actually just work him down before he has uh, any chance to get the Ravage off. Yeah. Well, it's actually... Does it... Uh, let me see this. I'm yeah. pretty sure it disables both parts of... It does, it does, it does other things as well. The region, the heals, all that fun stuff. Yep. Uh, also, potentially good against the Abaddon, can break the ability for the passive part of borrowed time to activate, yeah. so you have to manually use it. And you were mentioning, you know, the weight of the world being on Setsu's shoulders. It's not even just these team fights, you know. If he's alive, just in general, and he can get the mana to do it, he can push out these waves. He can stop a lot of this impact that the Lycan's having, especially now that he's level 18. You know, he's got that uh, maxed level ball lightning, so more damage coming through. It's going to be able to go off faster. I don't know. It's just a bad matter of, you know, being able to take your timings, not item timings, but actually how much time you're spending doing objectives on the map. So, Monet did decide to go back for a Yasha here, just wanted another little stopgap item, though it seems like he is still very much going uh, for the Battle Fury after that. Uh, Storm Spirit still number one on net worth, but Lycan nipping at his heels and IG going for a bit of a smoke. Uh, they don't have a ton of vision, so I imagine that this is both looking for a fight and trying to get some wards down. They're scouting with the wolves. They see a courier heading across, they know that there are heroes in the neighborhood. Ooh, September gets the dive through, now getting Yule stopped. Setsu with the BKB pop chooses to go for Kaka first. The Supernova gets popped, but it is instantly going to be dealt with. Kaka actually pretty tanky, Setsu unable to kill him. And this is pretty much his entire BKB duration used just to get the support Rana Abaddon trapped inside of the arena. It's just a one for one on the support trade so far, but they're chasing after Setsu on the other side. Flyfly Fly wants this kill on the Storm Spirit. He's got a little bit of mana left to make a jump, but Fly Fly's still staying on top of him. He loses the last bit of his ultimate though, and that means Setsu is able to walk it off super. Now trying to escape from JT, does not have the spear for another five seconds. A couple more auto attacks will find that kill. And overall just ends up being a couple of supports dying. Uh, even with everything popped, they're still holding on to the Ravage, fortunately. Yeah, some nice individual plays from Flywin as well to get away from the, uh, the pursuing Slark. Although speaking of him, Emo, he's tailing Monet. Yeah, Monet getting caught out. Puts down the smoke screen, hoping for some misses. Little jump away, but can he actually get out? Nope. JT's waiting for him with the spear, and that is Monet dead for 50 seconds. Are they still thinking about taking this fight, though? Storm Spirit wants to jump in. Doesn't have the BKB for another two seconds. Ravage now coming through. That's the Mars dead. Lycan looking like the next target. Pretty tanky with all this armor, but Setsu is still just dishing out damage non-stop. Tidehunter getting stunned up. Can they get Fly Fly out of here? They won't be able to. Setsu, last little bit of mana. Now Emo turns his attention towards him. He's been leashed up. The arrow doesn't quite land, but they've still got the damage to bring him down. Super trying to retreat back to the base now. Yule's on cooldown for the time being, but Emo's got the pounce and just laying in with the auto attacks. They do still want super and no buybacks available for RNG. Look at all those essence shift stacks as well. He's still oh 156 God. agility in these team fights. And I think he's he's definitely sticking around to finish off this tier three. They do have a respawning Ricky in a second, so IG gonna have to show that just a little bit of respect, but so unfortunate for RNG that they lost the Ricky at the time that they did. Just imagine if the Ricky was alive for that fight. It would have been a completely different situation, but instead the Storm Spirit just doesn't have the mana pool to completely clean everything up and uh, ends up going IG's way. Now they've got two different heroes on top of the Storm Spirit on the net worth, and net worth and experience just continue to get worse and worse from RNG's perspective. Especially with Ricky here, you know, uh, Storm does a ton of the damage, but Ricky is such a key important part as well, especially with the neutral items that have been provided to him. You know, an Imp Claw on this Ricky means that he is dishing out a ton of this damage. And, and again, speaking of neutral items, Sep, there is a Philosopher's Stone. There's plenty in your, uh, in your stash, but just nothing being used on him right now. So some inefficiency coming out from RNG. Yeah, both teams need to take a second to go and grab their their tier 3 neutrals actually. We're, we're kind of lacking a, a couple. 
It's only it's only one a piece. Okay, we got a we got a quickening charm now for uh, the radiant RNG pushing at bottom a little bit, but IG on the hunt found looking Monet. for this. They found Monet. Can they get this Ricky out of here? Super's there trying with the heals, but Kaka just gonna line up the arrows. Super once again trying to tank up, but. They lose the Ricky. They're gonna lose the Abaddon as well. Emo is just stacked out of control. He's got a gem as well, just to make it easier to hunt this Ricky. And Setsu doing his best to try and push out the mid lane, but there are mass TPs coming his way. And like we said, if he gets caught by a single stun, there's gonna be big trouble for him. Arrow? Oh, I don't know if that's quite scouted him, but he's not feeling confident. Wanting to get a few more of those essence shift stacks up, and you can see how important, you know, as you said before, Emo is carrying this uh, gem of true sight, so he realizes how important it is just to eliminate the Ricky from the equation from the very beginning. Means that uh, RNG's damage potential is reduced significantly, and with the Mirana just sticking by and buffing him up with a Solar Crest, both means that the Ricky is going to die quicker, as well as those essence shift stacks become much more of a factor. Yeah, it's it's so hard to play against a Slark lineup with a gem, right? Like, I, I don't know how you maintain any vision at this point if you're RNG. They're gonna know where wards are, they're gonna deward them easily without really any further investment. And we now have the Moonlight Shadow pop. So they send out Flywind on mid, and they will be smoking up behind him. Storm Spirit full mana, but Emo just gonna go running in here. They spear the Tide Hunter back. They've got the break on him. It's too much chain stun. He can't get the ravage off. He's dead for 50. They had the combination. Ricky can't even get out the tricks of the trade. He's now dead. Setsu fighting valiantly, and they do have the Supernova to fall back to. Setsu, a little bit of mana left, needs to get back into the fountain. Flyfly Fly gonna keep on chasing as Super will be the next one pounced on and the next one killed. IG finding a triple kill and Monet, 30 minutes in, he's had enough. GG will be called. Yeah. It, it, was, it just felt like little bits of miscommunication there on uh, RNG's side. You know, there were a few Ravages popped, which were, I guess you could say they were just for self preservation sakes, but it meant that uh, so much more of the map was open up for IG's sake afterwards. Uh, in that, uh, before that engagement, they popped both of their smokes. Um, so I know it really didn't make a big difference in the end, but it just shows the level of communication that's happening. And then uh, on September, he tried using the, uh, he used the Icarus dive when Tidehunter was getting gone on, and he didn't actually pop the supernova, which can act as like a, a pseudo taunt. You know, you don't want to let the supernova go off and might have distracted enough of their attention to make something else happen in the team fight, but just not really going well together at this point. And IG keep up their... Uh, impressive record against RNG, at least in recent times. Yeah, they got... To me, it just feels like they kind of got out-executed in some of those fights. And in fairness, RNG do have, I think, the harder team fight to execute. Like, they need the Storm Spirit to kind of catch somebody and force a commitment and then come in and get a multi-hero Ravage and, you know, have the Supernova running, uh, which is way harder than what IG have to do. It's just Emo or JT... Uh, going in to, to start off the fight on pretty much anybody. So, yeah, it, it looked really... It was very clean for IG, right? They they took a relatively early lead. I, I loved Flyfly's rotations in the early game, getting the kill on the Phoenix, switching to top, really applying a ton of pressure, getting a lot of gold for his team, and they just took that lead and just steadily uh, built it up, built it up, built it up, and walked away with the win. Yeah. Nicely done. Uh, I mean, it's, it's this is the style of game that IG have done in their past three encounters against RNG. They are picking some form of pushing lineup. And so mm -hmm. I wonder if RNG are going to maybe change things up, at least in the form of, you know, they try going with uh, first pick and second pick. They try changing that up a little bit. They could just essentially go, well, we're going to ban out Lycan, we're going to ban out DP, we're going to ban out Dragon Knight, and we're going to ban out, I don't know, something else that's just able to push forward and just try yeah. something new, you know? Yeah, I, I definitely want to see some kind of adjustments for them in uh, game number two. And on that note, we are going to head to a quick break. Thank you guys for being here and watching this coverage of the CDA League, and we'll be back for game two in just a couple of short minutes. See you then.